Are the judges ready? Yes. <clears throat> the timepiece? Yep. Ready. Some people used to say Frank had so many children he couldn't keep track of them all. There were twelve of us. Martha, Mary, Frank Jr., Bill, Will, Fred, Dan, Jack, Bob, and Baby Jane. <laughs> Hello, we are the Senior High Reader's Theater team from Cornerstone Family Schools, and today we will be presenting for you Cheaper by the Dozen. Cheap -che by Frank Gilbreth Jr. and how many want to go for a ride? When Dad rode, everybody rode. Oh, you all reached the big planet, Harry. Didn't have much trouble. Except for that one. But a spanking brought him into life. Not such one of ours, dear. He belongs next door. <laughs> Although Dad made his living redesigning complicated machinery, he never really understood our automobile. It was a great Pierce arrow. He had seen and fallen in love with. The affection was entirely one sided and unrequited. <laughs> Although, Dad didn't drive our automobile well. He did drive it fast! <laughs> Not so fast, Frank! Not so fast! <laughs> he terrified us all! Although Dad's driving was fraught with peril, there was a strange fascination. Death. It was standing up on a roller coaster. It was going up on stage, and the magician called him all tears. It was a back somersault on the high dive board. a lookout for cars approaching to the left. An identical lookout to the right! Someone to kneel. And look out to the back. The lookout on the front seat was my own idea. <laughs> the <laughs> other safety measures, which we inaugurated as a matter of self-preservation, were our own. Car coming from the left, Dad. Tail coming from the right. Motor cycle! I see them! I see them! He usually, usually, usually didn't. <laughs> we had seen Dad nick fenders, knock down full grown trees, and slaughter chickens! <laughs> I want to see you all smile. 
smile, or I'll give you something to really cry about. <laughs> <laughs> a few days after we bought the car, Dad brought each of us and told us to look in the engine and see if we could find the birdie. He tiptoed to the back and pressed down on the horn. Kaduga! Did you see the birdie? I bet you jumped six inches. <laughs> One day, the engine bucked, cocked, back, and stuck. Dad took off his jacket, rolled up his sleeves, and lifted the side of the hood. Nobody <laughs> noticed Bill had crawled into the front seat. Kaduga! <laughs> Dad jumped so high he fell into the engine, leaving his legs dangling in midair. You could hear the flesh sizzle. He was livid! There's a time and place for birdies, and there's a time and place for spanking! <laughs> yes, that was a good joke on me, Billy. You'll be the death of me yet, boy. We made quite the sight rolling along in the car. When passing through cities and villages, Dad would slow down to five miles an hour. I seen eleven of them, not counting the man and the woman. You, uh, missed the second video up here, mister. Goodness, an orphanage on wheels. How do you grow them carrot tops, brother? These, these aren't so much, friend. You should see the ones I look back at home. How many pounds do you take a week, child? <laughs> Does it hurt when your mother spanks you? You mean, your mother never spanks you? How about your father? He does? <laughs> no! Do you think it would be fun to have yet another baby brother? You how? Goodness! <laughs> how do you grow? With, how do you feed all these kids? Well, they come cheaper by the dozen. <laughs> this was designed to bring down the house. It usually did. Leave them in stitches. That was us. Six tenths of a mile, Bear left a brick, brick church and followed paved road. He'd listen and drive off in exactly the opposite direction, just the same. Lost! <laughs> well, Lily, uh, might as well stop and uh, eat some lunch while I get my bearings. Dad used the lunch period as an instruction hour. His primary rule was that no one could speak unless the subject was of general interest. It was Dad who determined what subjects were of 